Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside Don Bailey Jr., the University of Miami, coming off a 77-0 victory over Savannah State, the largest margin of victory ever by the Hurricanes. We'll talk about that with head coach Mark Rick coming up in our very next segment. But, Don, everybody played in this one except you and I. And, and we were close, right? It was a great game. It was nice to see the fans turn out for it. But I really enjoyed seeing all the young kids play. I really did, especially the quarterback group when – we were watching from the, from our booth and seeing the sideline on how they all encouraged each other and how they all were, were pushing each other and joking around a little bit and, and fun was back into the football. Also is a great opportunity for players to gain confidence. You got to do it in a stadium. I sometimes don't think it matters the opponent. This was not a great opponent, but players have to get into a stadium in game situations. Well, you have to get an understanding that no matter who the opponent is, the tempo or the speed is going to change. And also, you get a little nervous. You get a little hyped up. And for a lot of these guys, especially some that maybe were redshirted last year, they haven't played in a real game since high school. So it's a year, it's over a year, year and a half for some of them. And they come out and it's a big difference in a scrimmage because the scrimmage is always controlled. Here you have everything to figure into the equation. So it was good to see these young guys get on the field and play. This week the Hurricanes will play Toledo, 12 o'clock kickoff. We'll dive much more into Toledo in our upcoming segments. But suffice to say, last year they gave Miami all they wanted and they did win 11 games. They won uh, the MAC uh, conference last year went to a bowl game and won 11 games. You know, Joe was watching them and they're very efficient at what they do. Their offense runs very smoothly. Their, their head coach is well in tune to it. They've got a quarterback that's been into the system. They may have the best receiving core that Miami faces this entire season and they orchestrate the plays to fit their personnel offensively. Defensively, they, they play tough. They're maybe not as fast as a, as a lot of the teams that Miami will play, but they get to where they need to be, and they're well coached. I think uh, Miami going on the road against LSU probably will help them a little bit going into this game. Give them a good experience. It really will, and I think that that game had a big impact on Miami for this season. Obviously, the loss is the obvious thing, but more importantly than that, it got the attention of these football players. You know, you, you understand that you have to be prepared and you have to go and have to contribute every single play. I should say it was a neutral site game, but nonetheless, it's it's a road operation. Well, it was it was it was a road operation, but there was a lot of fans there for LSU. So I mean, it was a loud crowd. It was a, a big environment and you're going to be the true road team this week at the Glass Bowl. Kings did get a shutout against Savannah State. It was also Coach Rick's 20th win uh, as head coach at the University of Miami and the first shutout for Coach Rick at Miami and Manny Diaz. Well, I'm happy for Coach Diaz. You know, he's a guy that pours his heart and soul into every single day here. And no matter what anybody tells you, that's a big deal in today's college football is to have a shutout. And I love that Jaquan Johnson preserved it. He, he made a decision to come back this year as a hurricane. He's providing the leadership. He's He's getting national recognition, but he sets an example where he's going to personally make sure that this deal is closed out with zero points and he, he blocks a field goal. All right, let's take a look back at the highlights of Miami and Savannah State brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Cloudy skies, temperature 89 degrees here at Hard Rock Stadium for the home opener. There goes the smoke, and here come the Hurricanes at Hard Rock Stadium for the first time in 2018. And what a greeting they get. Rose, Enzo, Mowry jumps up. He's got it for a touchdown. It's a Miami touchdown. Rozier to the first left. Here comes a blitz. Fires down the middle. It's caught by Thomas. In stride at the 20, 15, 10. He's at the 5. He dives to the pylon. Ball is loose on the ground, and Miami might have it. And they're going to call that an incomplete pass or a fumble recovery by Miami. Hurricanes have the football. The chain is on. It looks different. There's not a U. It's a diamond-crested Sebastian to Ibis with a golden grin. High formation behind Perry. Off a of play fake, rolls the right side, throws, end zone. Caught by Jordan for a touchdown. Jordan has a touchdown from Perry with 11.34 to go in the third quarter. Snap comes back. Oh, Silvera blocked the punt. It's picked up by Patchen at the 10 at the 5, and Patchen runs in for a touchdown. 
So Vera blocked it. Hatchin scoops it up and runs it in for a touchdown. Look out. He breaks a tackle at the 45. Oh boy. He cuts right at the 40. And here we go. He's at the 30. Far sideline 25 20. Lingard at the 15. Cuts right at the 10 5. And Lingard goes all the way for a touchdown. Standing up into the end zone. Miami in a breeze tonight at Hard Rock Stadium in their home opener. Your final score Miami 77 and Savannah State nothing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show. Joe Zagacki alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. Our show is brought to you by Williamson Automotive, and of course, with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, and the Canes are coming off a very impressive 77-0 win over Savannah State. Coach, one win, one loss back in the win column, and a lot of guys played. The most guys I've ever seen play in a game, I think, um, and a lot of it had to do with the new redshirt rule. You could play guys up to four games, and still redshirt him so you, you don't hesitate as a coach to throw a guy in there we had this game a year ago we'd be sitting there going should we play Nicosi should we not should we play Weldon should we not or you know should we play a true freshman lineman or should we not you know guys like uh, Kyle Leon Herbert and Zelante Hillary they redshirted last year but if this rule is intact a year ago they, they had to play they, you know they had got some snaps Nicosi and and uh, and Cade got their first collegiate snaps. But if the rule was intact a year ago, they would they would have already had those snaps, had those experiences, and still could have redshirted those guys. So um, the the rule changing was big. Um, when a lot of guys play and, and do well, um, morale goes up for those guys that play and for the guys watching them. There was a lot of cheering for their teammates stuff. Uh, going on. I think the only guy that didn't want to hug his teammate was uh, Robert Burns. And Robert Burns is the classiest kid on the team. But uh, down on the goal line, we had when Jaron pulled the ball and scored, it's supposed to be an automatic give. It was a give no matter what. There was no option to pull the ball. <laughs> and uh, he pulls the ball anyway and scores. And and Robert was like running into the end zone. Looked like he was, I thought Robert scored because there, there was no option to pull it. And, they said, no, Jaron's got the ball. And uh, so I didn't see Robert go over there and hug him. Don interviewed all four quarterbacks, which was pretty interesting in the post game. Uh, they all seemed to be uh, gelling together, and the young guys did well. And, and Malik threw a beautiful ball to Jeff Thomas as well. Yeah, it was one of his better passes of his career. You know, when you hit a guy on a dead run, you score touchdowns, or at least that's what we talk about yards after the catch. Like, you could have completed that ball, slowed him down enough where the guy might could have tackled him within three yards. But, you know, you hit him on the dead run, he gets yards after the catch, he finds a way to get it in the end zone. And, uh, you know, that's a, that, those are difference-making passes. Uh, but uh, it, the protection was superb. Every single guy had a really nice pocket to work from. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a little bit of scrambling out of the pocket when you didn't need to. Uh, here and there, but um, for the most part, I thought the quarterbacks did a good job. The turnover chain did make an appearance. I thought it was important for a lot of reasons. Uh, see if you agree with me, but one, co again, confidence. It's kind of like a, a baseball player if he goes into a drought. If it's a broken bat single, it still looks like a line drive, right? right? And so, yeah. so you got, got the well, turnover, we didn't, we didn't, the turnover's the going. Yeah, we didn't get to break it out game one. So game two, it came out a few times, which is great. Um, you know, one week Trajan Bandy gets ejected from the game for targeting, and the next game he's he's in Hard Rock, you know, celebrating with the uh, the the new improved turnover chain. And uh, I don't know if you guys seen that thing up close or not, but uh, it's pretty spectacular. It's you would think, hey, you can make a mold of Sebastian and paint it and make it really look cool and put it on a nice chain, and but every detail of that of that uh, turnover chain or, or of Sebastian himself is it's, it's jewelry. It's, it's not any kind of painting or, you know, some kind of mold. I mean, even the feathers coming out, coming out of his britches uh, <laughs> are, are pieces of jewelry instead of just some kind of mold. Coach, the value of a shutout, right? You, you can't overlook that either. Yeah, for it's the first time, you know, since uh, I've been here and, you know, Manny's, First one as the coordinator and, and with the staff, of course, and the, and the players. And uh, you talk about, 
you know, feeling like you might have, you know, hurt the shutout by throwing a pick. Nikosi's pick was relatively deep into our territory, and, you know, our defense gets a three and out, forces a field goal, and then Jaquan Johnson goes and gets a piece of it and um, keeps it from scoring. I mean, you know the stat. What's the stat? I mean, they how many field goals have people lined up for and made? Made 25. In a row? Made 20, so 25 in a row. Our opponents have made 25 field goals in a row against us. And then that stopped. And it's like 56 straight kicks. Right. It included it, 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 it so to to, uh, to will his way through there and say, we're not, well, I'm not going to let anybody get any points was pretty spectacular. And, uh, um, you know, it, it couldn't have him, you know, to a better guy, your, your senior, your leader, um, and, uh, you know, guys preseason All-American, Jaquan Johnson. All right, we will continue with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. This week's challenge is Toledo on the road, 12 o'clock kickoff, and we'll continue with our show right after this. Happy to welcome you back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. This week, the Canes will be at the Glass Bowl in Toledo, Ohio, to take on uh, the Toledo Rockets, a team you saw last year, uh, well-coached team, well-organized, and played the same brand of football for a long time. I think it was our first game back after the hurricane, and um, we struggled in that first half. Actually, you know, in our element, of heat and humidity, uh, we really, you know, you would have looked at that game in the off season and said that's going to be our advantage to play them in in a hot, smoking, you know, smoking hot uh, element. But uh, I think it was tougher on us than them. We were still trying to get back in football shape, and the best thing that happened to us was halftime, and uh, got a little bit of chance to rest and rehydrate, and then also. Uh, you know, the sun went down and started playing in the shade in the second half, and I think it really helped us. But um, like we've been saying all along, a, a great team, a championship te type team in, in their conference, and a um, team that can score, team that's used to winning. Uh, teams that win a lot are uh, they're hard to beat. They don't beat themselves, like I mentioned before, and um, it's going to be a great challenge for us. They have an open date before us. Um, you know, so they played one game, probably didn't have to show a whole lot. And then I would imagine all summer and the last two weeks, they've been priming for this moment. And uh, it'll be in their stands and their fans will be there. And we got to be ready to, to take a punch and give one back. It helps, Coach, that you went on the road game one. So you have a lot of new faces on the airplane. It won't be so new to, new to them when you go to Toledo. Yeah, no doubt. Um, there's something about playing in somebody else's stadium. There's some good things about it. You can have that us against the world mentality. And there's something to that to unify a team. But also you got to deal with crowd noise. you got to deal with um, any little good thing that happens for them. They get excited. And if something doesn't go just quite right for us, you know, we'll hear about it, and uh, so we got to be able to weather the storm. You know, they they're they're going to make some plays, um, both sides of the ball, and then special teams. They're very very solid in all areas, and uh, you know they haven't won all these games for nothing. And they won eleven last year, so that got them the conference championship. Six of the last seven years, they've won at least nine games, I believe it is. So you mentioned their winning tradition. I always think that these teams, uh, MAC team, or teams that. Uh, they're outside the power of five. One of the ways they can try to uh, compete or level the playing field a little bit is because their players are in their system for so long. Does, does that really help, especially from a, a coaching perspective? I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, let's say if you could redshirt every player you have and you knew he'd stay for the total five year total and play, play four, I mean, how much, how much more mature would your team be physically, mentally? spiritually the whole thing I mean uh, and I'm not saying that happens to them uh, uh, to every single player that they have but they do have guys that stick around and play through their careers and through all of their eligibility and it, it does make a big difference. The other thing that I think that gets missed coach is there's a lot of schools outside the state of Florida are recruiting the state of Florida so you got guys that played against each other on this football team so there's that little rivalry right there's there too. No doubt. And, and when guys get a chance to play 
against the home team, whether they come to our house or we go to theirs, it's very meaningful to them. That's you know, it's, there's just a little bit more passion uh, that a guy has in his in his belly uh, when you know he's playing against his hometown team. All right, Coach, thank you very much, and the best of luck on Saturday against Toledo. And when we come back, Don and I will continue on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Back on the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr. will be with the Hurricanes on Saturday at Toledo, a 12 o'clock kickoff at the Glass Bowl. Mitch Guadani is the new quarterback this year, replacing Logan Whiteside. Uh, Guadani is in his third year in the program, but this will only be his second game. Whiteside taught him a lot, right? You, you sit behind a quarterback that was as successful as Logan was last year for Toledo, and you can only get better. I, I watched him against VMI, and he's he'll run the football. He has a good arm. He may not have the numbers that, that they got out of Logan last year, but you will see a guy that understands the offense, and I think that's key, and that's what, what he gained by sitting for a couple years is he learned what he's supposed to do in all these circumstances, and you're right, though. It is only his second start. They have Deontay Johnson, who is an uh, all-time leading receiver there, John Bay Johnson, who's pretty good as well, and then uh, uh, Thompson is a really good player. He's uh, getting his master's degree, and he catches everything everything number 25 he, and he's caught everything since the guy he got on that campus and you look at that receiving core and there's an unselfishness and they encourage each other and they have size it, these aren't a lot of water bugs running around out there there's some big guys that can make some plays and they've played big time opponents Joe they played Miami last year and I'm sure that their coach is telling them look guys we were in the game they're coming to our place let's just finish this thing off and give it a good 60 minutes so they have a really good kicking game an outstanding uh, field goal kicker so they're solid there on defense they, they like what they're doing on defense as well and uh, these teams that uh, that are outside the Power Five. Uh, they redshirt a lot of players. They have guys with uh, in the program for a long time. I like to say it's a program with roots. Uh, defensively for them, their strength this year seems to be uh, at linebacker, but also in the secondary. Yeah, they graduated a bunch of seniors, you know, off of both sides of the football last year, but. They also have a nice mix of kids from Florida and some, some Dade and Broward County kids as well. But defensively, they, you know, they pay a, a four-man front and they're, they go upfield and they're big and they're strong and, and you're really, you're not going to overpower them. Now you might outrun them some and you might have some better athletes, but you are not going to overpower them on either side of the football. A couple of years ago, the University of Miami went on the road a similar game with the Appalachian State and handled them pretty easily in the first play of the game. Mark Walton went 80 yards for a touchdown. It would be nice to start this game that way. It might not be an 80-yard touchdown, but you do want to be the front runner in this game. Well, you have to be because if you if you have turnovers and you have penalties, then you're going to invite the crowd into into the game for Toledo. Now you're going to give them the extra man, and even though it's less than 30,000 people that fit in that stadium, you, it's going to sound like it's 60. So you have to play your game. You have to. Follow the rules of the road. You can't you can't give up any block kicks. You can't have a ton of penalties. You got to be careful of the turnover, and you just want to make sure that you keep the momentum at bay. All right, looking forward to it. Twelve o'clock. We're going to Toledo, Ohio. I'm Never ready. There. Yeah, me either. <laughs> okay, Fred Coach Mark Rick and Don Bailey Jr. I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time, right here on the Mark Rick Show. So long, everyone.